Dr. Diane Panika is one of those people whose discoveries impact our daily lives. Born and raised in upstate New York, Diane received her Bachelor of Science degree in biology from the State University of New York at Fredonia, where she had planned to major in elementary education. But that's not what happened. And I found a transcript of, of, of um, what I was doing at, at Fredonia. And I got a C in the education courses, and I got an A in biology and physics and chemistry. And my teachers said, why don't you come and work in my lab after classes? And they were doing some research on cystic fibrosis. It was that experience in the lab that changed her career path. And one of the professors said, Diane, you should go get your PhD. And I said, me, my, a PhD? And he said, words that I will never forget. He said, sure, you can do it. And that changed my life. Hard work earned her acceptance letters to several prestigious schools. But it was Paul Cohen's personal touch that made her decision where to do her PhD work much easier. And he said, Diane, I can't wait to have you work in my lab. This is what I'm working on. I am so excited. And I was hooked. I mean, that alone was enough to make me want to work, go to URI. Paul made it easy for Diane to get excited about her research. In 1980, she was hired as the 60th employee at the biotech corporation, Genentech, and immediately set her sights on a major project. When I started at Genentech in 1980, their focus was heart disease. So my goal was to try to find a a drug that could be used to treat heart attacks. Being one of a handful of women in science at the time turned out to have its advantages. When her male colleagues could not attend a meeting in Sweden, she was asked to go in their place. But it was Diane's own diligence for being early that changed her life. During a break, one of the guys came up to me and said, can I help you? And I said, I am so sorry, my name's Dr. Diane Panika. I'm late for this meeting. And he said, oh, this is not the real meeting. It turns out I had gotten into a private pre-conference session by accident. I wasn't supposed to be there. And they didn't kick me out because they thought I was one of the scientist's daughters waiting for her dad. It was at that conference Diane met the scientists that she would work with to co-discover the heart attack and stroke drug, TPA. I worked for two years straight without taking a day off. And finally, in 1982, I had isolated the gene that makes this protein called tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, that dissolves blood clots in your, in your, um, in your body. In 1987, it was approved for the use in heart attacks by the FDA, and in 1996, it was approved for the use of strokes. Here at the University of Rhode Island, John Kirby, Dean of the College of the Environment and Life Sciences, knows the importance of Diane's work. Because of Diane's work, and cloning and, and expressing the gene um, have led to tremendous recoveries of people who've had serious and traumatic brain injury from strokes. So we like to claim her as our outstanding person, prepared, well-prepared mind, hardworking, and at the right place at the right time. Dr. Panika's lab work also includes other exciting discoveries, like isolating the gene having to do with arthritis pain. But she's heard numerous times that her TPA discovery has saved lives. Um, my favorite was, was the heart attack and stroke drug, of course, because I have now met a few patients who have been helped and survived because of this drug. You saved my life. Thank you so very, very much. And there are letters and pictures to prove it. It makes me realize that all the hard work and no days off, all the training that I got at URI was worth it. Though times have changed for women in science, today's students are still looking for female role models. And here at URI, students look to Diane. She's also a great example for students who look at some of the gender roles we've had to deal with because um, until the last decade or so, we were very much biased towards male students across all the sciences. And now if you look at colleges like CELS, almost more than half of our students, almost 60% of our students are female. And so that the students that are going into these careers in, in the sciences are female and seeing someone like Diane, who's come through the ranks here at URI and CELS and then gone out and succeeded in the business world, and then to be able to retire at a very young age from having done so well um, is, is, quite a, is quite a good thing. Her career at Genentech spanned 30 years with 100 publications and 41 issued patents to her credit. But it is her friend and mentor, Paul Cohen, 
that still keeps her connected to the University of Rhode Island. She was presented the Inventor of the Year Award from the Intellectual Property Owners Foundation in Washington, D.C. And her PhD advisor was there to support her. He's been in, at URI for over 46 years, so an incredible professor. And I'm sure I told him he changed my life. <laughs>